<laughs> all right, well, I'm going to share with you guys two goals, first of all. The reason I'm up here. One, I have terrible stage fright. <laughs> so hopefully by getting up here. <laughs> I, tr I trust you guys. That's why I'm up here. <laughs> Um, my second goal is, this is fun, what I'm about to do, and I would like to uh, be able to get over my stage fright and enjoy this with you guys more often. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys, more clapping, that's what I need. Um, so, uh, you guys know me as a very energetic person, or if you don't know me, I'm very, very positive. What I'm about to do is a bit more of a serious, uh, it's a prose piece. I actually have to do it for a performance class, and that's why I'm going to practice it in front of you guys, is to kind of help build some confidence with it. Um, for my prose class, what we do is we take literature and we explore it through performance. And um, the piece that I'm doing is by Alice Walker. You might know her as the person who also wrote The Color Purple. Um, the piece that I'm going to be doing is from uh, a book that she wrote called uh, In Love and Trouble. And it's uh, Her Sweet Jerome is what I'm going to be taking an excerpt from. Just to give you a little bit of a background of the story, the story is about, um, it's a very unattractive, or at least so she feels, um, overweight um, black woman who has made success of herself by, uh, she learned from a lady how to cut hair, and she opened up her own beauty parlor, despite what, you know, um, obviously back then, women probably were pretty much the lowest on the totem pole as far as respect went. And her own father disrespected her. She was abused. Um, she fell in love with a school teacher. And she kind of was a sugar mama. She basically uh, <laughs> ended up buying him a car to win over his love. He didn't like the car so much, so she went and bought him another car. And uh, they eventually got married. And he didn't pay her very much attention. In fact, she uh, was very much abused by this guy. And uh, this little excerpt that I'm going to share uh, is basically uh, when she first hears gossip that her man is cheating on her, and she thinks that maybe that is why um, he is being so neglectful in their relationship. So here it goes. It was at her shop that she first heard the giggling and saw the smirks. It was at her shop that gossip gave her to understand as one woman told her. Your cute little man is sticking his finger into somebody else's pie. Of course, she was not and could not be surprised as she stared down at the amused and self-contented face. For her own pie had been going and for the longest time had been going strictly untouched. From that first day of slyly whispered hints, your old man's tried to put something over on you, sweets. She tried to find out who he was fooling around with. Her sources of gossip were malicious and mean, but she could think of nothing to do but believe them. She searched high and she searched low. She looked in taverns and she looked in churches. She went to the school where he worked. She went to city parks and outside the city limits, all while buying axes and pistols and knives of all descriptions. Of course, she said nothing to her sweet Jerome, who watched her movements from behind the covers of his vast supply of paperback novels. Of course, this hobby of his, she heartily encouraged, relegating reading to the importance of <laughs> scanning the funnies. Besides, it was something that he could do at home, that is, if she could convince him that she would be completely silent for an evening, and of course, if he would stay. She turned the whole town upside down, looking at white girls, black women, brown beauties, ugly hags of all shades. She found nothing. And her sweet Jerome would smile smugly and continue reading and he would shush her with his carefully cleaned and lusted finger. Don't interrupt me, he was always saying. And he would continue to read as she stood there behind him, glowering darkly, <sighs> muttering dark threats in her throat, and then stamping off flat-footed with her collection of weapons. That's it, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs>